If your attention span is absolutely awful, go to settings and change the video to 2x speed. I remember a while back when it was very hard to install a Minecraft mod. What is very shocking about all of this is that last year you may have heard that there was a virus going around called Fracturizer. There's a video from Purplers that covers this, but long story short, the creator of this mod called Sodium was very upset with CurseForge's antics and they moved to this platform called Modrith. CurseForge went and delisted Sodium and people went in and uploaded a bunch of viruses disguised as the Sodium optimization mod and caused certain mod packs to have malware in it. And worst of all, there was a second Minecraft malware incident that happened months later. One of the things that personally scared me whenever I installed these third-party launchers back then was there was a chance that they could grab your credentials and they could have a virus. On the other hand, big YouTubers like the Yogscast were using them and they were promoting them, and luckily there weren't any real incidents involving that. I do want to make this clear that I'm leaving out the context in terms of Hypixel Skyblock in the malicious mods that people would trick other people into downloading. There's definitely been one-on-one -on -one or fake launchers that have been put out, but most of the mainstream mod launchers have not had any issues with them up until last year. Modrinth announced in a blog in November of 2020 that they were going to be an open source mod hosting platform. Now, because there are so many websites out there that were hosting mods and there's so many third-party launchers, this is something that didn't really raise that many people's eyes. Now, something interesting to know is that the Curse Launcher is the main launcher that you would use today if you want to install a mod pack. But back then, there were tons of other launchers that you would use in order to get a Minecraft mod. Now today, you don't actually have to use a Minecraft mod launcher, but you have to do shady things such as run a jar file on your computer. Now to some people, this isn't that much of a problem, but this can be a real security issue. If you don't use a third-party launcher, you're going to have to go through the trouble of going to Fabric or the Forge website, using the installer, and installing the mods individually. And because a lot of these mod packs have a ton of individual mods that need updating and there could be vulnerabilities, it is a pain to individually update each mod. One of the earliest launchers that you may have heard of is called the Technic Launcher, and they're still around today. And Feed the Beast has gone through many different launchers over the years. Feed the Beast was using the CurseForge launcher, but if you go to their mod packs now, they'll tell you to go and install their individual launcher to play their newer mod packs. The thing that made the Modrunth third-party launcher special is that it was very friendly to developers. Modrunth was built for the community, and it was supposed to be open source. But something really, really interesting happened. On February 1st, 2023, Monrith announced that they had raised money from the Makers Fund, a venture capital company. In the Q&A for the blog post, Monrith announced that they needed the funding in order to cover their labor costs to develop Monrith. They also said that they were still going to be community first, and they included the most important detail since venture capital funds were known for investing in cryptocurrency projects, they said that they have no plans in exploring Web3 or cryptocurrency. So that was a relief for a lot of people. Now, if you go to the website for the Makers Fund, you'll go in and you'll see that if you look through the projects that it's funded, Modrinth is one of them. Another company that some of you might recognize on this list is FRVR. That's the company that owns Crunker and this other voxel game. I'm not going to fully go into what people's complaints are about CurseForge because I don't really entirely know what they are, but I can definitely tell you that Curse has been acquired by multiple different companies. It was acquired by Twitch, which you had to go to Twitch and install the launcher, and then it was acquired by Overwolf, which then you had to uninstall that and install Overwolf. Getting back to the big news that was made in the last couple days, on April 4th, 2024, Jai, who is the founder of Modrinth, went and announced that a year and a half before, they had raised $1.2 million of pre-seed investor capital. Using that money, they were able to hire full-time developers and part-time community members to moderate their platform. One of the important things to mention about the Modrinth platform is that you need to have moderators review your mods when you upload it to the platform to protect its users. They mentioned that instead of making some technical changes that were going to cost some money, they went and just hired more moderators and spent that venture capital money to do so. One of the things that the founder of Modrinth mentions is that investors expect a return on their investment and they would need to prioritize profits if they couldn't do so. In other words, they were going to have to make design decisions that were going to likely make Modrath worse. So after coming to this conclusion, he announced that he did not want to go down the venture capital route. As he said, in the end, as of February 1st, 2024, I decided to return 800000 in remaining investor capital back to our investors. He mentioned some of the people on the team that they were going to have to let go, and he specifically thanked them for their work. While Modrinth may have lost $400,000 of investor money, they could have gone down a way worse path than we expected. Now, he did mention that he was going to make this announcement sooner, but he had to do certain legal work, and he also needed to return the money to the investors before announcing this. One of the most important things that you can get out of this blog post is, hosting Modrinth is already sustainable, and we are working to make developing Modrinth sustainable as well. 
Now, while it's sad that they had to fire people, the good news is they will be able to continue operating. This is extremely good news, and hopefully Modrinth will go down a bright path. And hopefully a path that doesn't involve them being acquired by three or four different companies and them juggling around launchers. I do want to end this video off by saying that we are halfway to monetization already. You need 4,000 watch hours in order to monetize your YouTube channel, and we're above 2,000 right now. Thank you guys so much.